Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy feast days, Brazlikum. Brazlikum. Today, of course, is this great feast which we have, of course, fasted for for several weeks in honor of these holy apostles who dedicated themselves and their lives to Christ and provide us with a model, too, of how we are to follow Christ. And we see in these two men, men, of course, who came from the same part of the world, men who held the same religion, but men of very different backgrounds and men of very different temperaments to some degree, and different fears, different temptations, different weaknesses, and different strengths. St. John of Kronstadt, looking at this passage, talks about, of course, looking at the apostles, talks about how, of course, when Peter and Andrew were called, and James and John, they put aside their nets. And he said, looking at these men, we too must look at the own nets in our lives that are the things that are holding us back and be willing to put them aside, whatever things that are that keep us back from following Christ and truly following of Christ. And Peter and Paul, of course, were to see many ways after this and of things like that that held them back from following Christ. Peter, of course, as we know, followed Christ from early on, but he certainly had his weaknesses, he certainly had his temptations, he certainly had his doubts and his lack of faith. Well, they all did. He's not unique in that. He falls into the water when he takes his eyes off of Christ, as we all fall into the water as we take our eyes off Christ and look at the temptations of the wind that's blowing instead of the one thing needful. Peter, of course, ultimately denies Christ despite his vehemence that he will never do such a thing. He had a rather vehement spirit, but also he feared. He feared the danger, he feared the temptations, he feared the Romans, the things that would happen to him if he, of course, followed Christ and confessed him at that point. So later on, his threefold denial is followed by a threefold question, Peter, do you love me? Of course, he gets frustrated with this at the end, after the Lord keeps instructing him what he must do, feed the sheep, tend my sheep. But the Lord says to him, that when you were young, you walked where you, where you wanted to and gird yourself. But when you're old, others will gird you. You will walk where you were not, signifying by what death he would die. By great difficulties, he enters into the kingdom of heaven. Paul, of course, was a very educated man, knew Greek rather well, studied at the feet of Gamaliel, the great teacher, was a, zeal, was a great zealot for the faith, had great zeal. He loved his faith very much, so much that he wanted to tear down this Christianity, tear down this Christ. Because he knew all the things in his head that he thought he knew, but he hadn't quite been penetrated in the heart. And so as he is going out, of course, to persecute Christians, as this, of course, documents say that he can capture Christians, he is knocked down by this blinding light. Paul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? Jesus, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. Just think about that for a minute. Was he actually persecuting Jesus? Yes, but he was persecuting him in the form of us, in the body of Christ, his real body. Hard for you to kick against the goads. And he says later on, and you can see the Lord says, how many times, how much, how many tribulations and difficulties he must undergo to enter the kingdom of heaven. And we just heard in this epistle that was read times in the deep, times in the stone, times in he was beaten, imprisoned, privations and vigils, and on and on and on, the perils that he underwent for the sake of the kingdom of God. But both of these men and all the trials they underwent, which probably are far greater than anybody's in this room, even though we have our own temptations, the ones that the Lord allowed us to have, but perhaps if we got out of the way and truly desired to become as saints as these two men did, they're no more special than us. Look at them, for goodness sake. They had their weaknesses. But they followed. They didn't let anything hold them back. They willed to follow Christ. They willed to put into practice the gospel at every single moment of their lives. And that brought great temptations to them because the world was not like that. 
The devil is not like that. So Paul, so Peter who tells us we can become partakers of the divine nature, indeed becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Not only does he see the transfiguration, remember in all his temptations and trials, he's given great consolation. He's allowed to see the uncreated light. He has the Lord appear to him. He works great miracles. Christ is working through him. But Paul, too, in all the tribulations he's going through, no longer lives, but Christ lives in him. He says that he will resolve to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. That is his life, Christ and that crucifixion, of course, which leads to that resurrection. He goes around all parts of the known world preaching Christ, a great peril to himself over and over and over. Why do these men do this? Why do they leave their homes? Why do they go out into the world? Because they had fallen in love with the only begotten Son of God. They had absolutely fallen in love with the Gospel. And in that, they had absolutely fallen in love with all the peoples of the earth. Reminds me of St. Silouan's prayer, I pray thee, O merciful Lord, for all the peoples of the world, they may come to know thee by the power of thy Holy Spirit. St. Silouan wept for the world. Peter and Paul wept for the world. And sometimes we want to be abstract and love God without the world, but we can't. Because we cannot love God when we cannot love the neighbors right in front of us. I recalled a few weeks ago to my spiritual father that I dread going to the airport. I always hate going to the airport. Not only because it's hectic and crazy and loud, but the temptations are tremendous. Not only, I'm not the weirdest person in there, which is amazing. But there's a lot of strange people in the airport. And it's always a temptation to look at them and look at that person. But I told myself this time, I was going to look for Jesus in every one of those people. And in doing that, the airport was a different place. It wasn't so bad because really odd people had Jesus in them, including me. Because you've got to think, as odd as I thought they were, them looking at me had to think, that's a lunatic. But yet, if they were truly looking at me with eyes to see, we would see Christ and everyone around us because he's there. That image is there. Have we attained to that likeness? Not so much always. But that is there for us to do, to attain to the likeness of God by following his commandments, by praying, by fasting, by loving our neighbor, by denying ourselves, by taking up our crosses and loving Christ, no matter what the costs. Because we see what the rewards are, Peter and Paul. We don't do it just for the reward. We do it even without the reward because we love Christ. Much as we would throw ourselves in the way of a car for someone we love, perhaps, I hope, for our child, for our spouse, for someone we really care about, we should be willing to do that for Christ. Even if we find ourselves in Hades, we would do it for Christ because Christ first loved us. And the apostles realized that. These are men that absolutely, unequivocally filled up with Christ. Silver and gold I didn't have to give you, but what I have is rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. They have Christ. And that is what we need to strive for every day, to attain to Christ, to grasp Christ, to seize Christ, to keep Christ buried in our hearts so that he might grow forth and flower forth in our lives, that we too might go throughout the universe, and we may no longer live, but Christ might live in us, because in that, we truly become real apostasies, true persons, as Christ intended us to be, created an image and living in the likeness of the Most Holy Trinity. Saints Peter and Paul pray to God for us. Amen.